So we're not scattered, please. So I'm welcome to today's uh, service. Um, we are going to repeat the same module from last week. So please, group one, if you could uh, take your positions. Uh, group one is bench one, group two is uh, bench two, and group three is bench three. Thank you. Okay, so welcome again and thank you to everyone that read the Bible verses last week and we all that uh, participated. So before we start uh, today's service, we would, um, today's uh, Bible class, we want to commit the class um, to God Almighty for him to take charge and take control. Um, so could you lead us in prayer, if you don't mind? Lord, let it, thank you for letting us all be here. Lord, thank you for letting us be able to rest and be able to wake up this morning. Lord, thank you for letting us travel here safely and nothing bad happening to us. Lord, during this Bible study, you will talk to us and you will t tell us what to say unto everybody. And you will lead us in the right direction. And this service will be blessed. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so last week we had uh, Bible verses assigned to groups one, two, and three. And we'll do the same thing today uh, for the flow of the class. So group one, um, please uh, prepare to read... Um, Uh, prepare to read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 5. And also prepare to respond to the question. Uh, the question assigned to your group will be, what is the essence of the gospel message? What is the essence of the gospel message? So again, your Bible verse is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 5. And the question would be, your group question is, what is the essence of the gospel message? And then group two, your Bible verse is uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. That's for group two. And then your group question is, uh, what do you think? motivated Jesus to endure the agony of betrayal? What helped Christ to, um, to, um, to endure the agony of the cross? So that will be the question for group two. Your Bible verse is Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Then group three, your Bible verse is 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 26. And your question is, if Christ was truly raised from the dead, then what? Any questions? Um, the Bible verse is 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 26. And your question is, if Christ was truly raised from the dead, then what? Okay, thank you all for taking down your Bible verses. So before we go ahead and start, we want to reflect on last week's study. So last week we looked at, last Sunday, uh, we looked at the birth, um, the, um, the missionary of Christ. Um, he's, um, for the three years that he taught, he performed miracles, 
uh, we briefly touched on those, and we looked at um, his um, death, and of course, briefly, his resurrection. And then we concluded by um, quoting an ecclesiastist, um, and of course, the pastor also referred to Matthew. Um, the pastor's uh, reference to Matthew, that's uh, Dr. Fabuli, he, he talked of the essence of love, and you can see that uh, Matthew um, 22, um, talk, if someone could uh, please open that verse. That's Matthew 22, verse uh, 35. And uh, he talks about love, um, referencing Christ. And love was uh, compared to the hinge. As you're looking at the doors, we have um, how many doors? We have four doors. You have two double doors. We have two single doors. And these single doors on their own are heavy. However, irrespective of their weight, irrespective of the important function the door plays, without the hinge that holds the door in place, the door cannot perform its role. So if you look at the doors, the th four doors, there are hinges at strategic positions. Sometimes you can have a hinge um, on the top and then another hinge in the center and another hinge in the bottom, in the lower section of the door. And the essence of the hinge is to hold the door in place. So the Bible compared love to the hinge. Our faith in Christ hinges on love. Our love for God, our love for our, individual, our, um, our fellow individuals. Um, so love is crucial. Because without love, we cannot worship God. We can't have good relationships with other people. Um, it will be difficult for us to function in human society. So uh, the Christ um, told the Pharisees and Sadducees that love, when they tried to tempt him. Could someone read the Bible verse, Matthew 22? Yes, please go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you. So we can see that the teachers of the law in those days, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, these are sects that had their own perspectives of um, the laws of God, uh, their own perspectives of the law of Moses. So when they had Christ, they came at various points to test him. Some asked him difficult questions about if they should pay tax to Caesar and they brought the, you know, and he responded to them intelligently. They, okay, who do you see? Whose image do you see on the coin? Um, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. And they asked him all sorts of questions. Then you had a lawyer, a Pharisee, um, a master of the law, who came to ask him the greatest commandment because he wanted to test him. And Christ just uh, responded and told him, as our sister had read, that is love God, you know, and then love your neighbor, and then love your fellow human being. Could you repeat that, please? And with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And then the next one. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on, the two, on these two commandments. Awesome. Thank you. So all the laws of God hinge on these two key. These two commandments are the overarching commandments of all the commandments. Because if we are able to love God with all our hearts and our minds, our might, and we're able to love our fellow human being, then it becomes easier to fulfill the other commandments because it's just a given. They hinge, they rely on our abilities to, uh, to um, 
to fulfill um, those other two key commandments, love. And whatever we do in life, uh, we can sing well, preach well, um, be well educated. But if we don't have the love for God, the sincere love for God, and the sincere love for our fellow human being, um, is a waste of time. Um, hence the importance of uh, love. So the man of God, Dr. Fabule, discussed that and asked us to consider that as we um, went about our business during the week and on, on an ongoing uh, basis. Um, so for today, we are going to go back to the work of Christ. I, I would uh, take it over to um, group one. Could you read your Bible verse? I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, but which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in me. For I delivered unto you first of all with that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Thank you, uh, Brother Caleb. So Christ died for our sins, and he resurrected on the third day and ascended to heavens. So you hear some scholars argue or simply contest the, um, the idea of Christ's uh, resurrection. Even from the time of the Bible, you saw how they, um, they bribed the, um, some individuals, the guards, to lie that the disciples of Christ came and stole him, that he did not actually resurrect. And Apostle Paul will make the argument that, okay, if we think that, if people have the argument or the thoughts that Christ did not resurrect, then what is the hope? What's the essence? Why are we here because the essence of what we're doing is that we believe that we will join God in heaven. It's that hope of heaven because we believe that Christ sets that trail of resurrection. So resurrection is important in Christendom. That belief that Christ died for our sins and that he resurrected. And he died for our sins because his father loved us and he loves us. And he came to fulfill um, um, that expectation. So it will take us to the question of what is the essence of the gospel message, group one? Why do we think? What's, what's the gospel message all about? Why is it important? How do we see the gospel message as it relates to what we do today in worshiping God? Um, the gospel message... Uh, well, the essence of it was to Christ, for Christ to bring all sinners to repentance. Because, you know, he says in Matthew how he didn't, call, he didn't come to call the righteous, but to call the sinners to repentance. So, you know, we, we couldn't save ourselves. And that's Thank you. Was. Thank you, dear Caleb. Yes, yes, that's the thing. He came to die for sinners. He came to call sinners to repentance. And hence the Bible used their metaphors at various points to talk about someone who had a hundred sheep and lost one. And the person goes out to find that one because every sheep is important. Every soul is important. Hence, God sent Christ for redemption, to die um, so that uh, we can be saved. And remember that takes us to, um, to think about the attributes of our God. We know, we know him as a God with four major attributes, wisdom, power, justice, and love. And we were told that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So that faith in Christ, that, that he came to die for our sins and to save us, guides our behavior, guides our, you know, whatever we do, so that we are complying with the laws of God and worshiping God sincerely. Um, so any other comments on group one, from group one? 
the essence of the gospel, any thoughts? Okay, group two. So it's your turn to read your Bible verse. For seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doubt so easily best us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry? Yes. Yes, you did. Yeah, thank you for the reading. Um, so we can see that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And he endured um, all the things against him, all the accusations, the false accusations against him, um, he bore the cross, he carried our sins, and he was crucified. Um, he, was, he was the righteous one, but uh, because of our sins and because of the need for him to fulfill that call of dying for our sins to redeem mankind, Jesus had to be killed. So there's no doubt about that. And we as Christians should articulate that wherever we go. Because sometimes you have folks in the community who would uh, argue that, that how come? How, did, how can someone, one person, die for the sins of, uh, of all? Um, they may not understand it. So it's our role as Christians um, to refer to the Bible, um, to articulate that, um, so they can have knowledge, because we know um, the lack of knowledge can be um, serious, um, so, so that they are able to have some good insight as to how why Christ was sent uh, regarding the prophecies and how he was able to fulfill uh, those prophecies. So, uh, so group two, uh, you can go ahead and respond to your question. Do you remember your question? Okay. <laughs> okay. What <Hello>. does it... <laughs> she wants to participate as well. <laughs> So what does it mean to you to know that Jesus was raised from the dead and is alive today? Anyone else from... That's for bench three. Oh, okay. Thank you. What do you think motivated Christ to endure the agony and betrayal of, um, of death and shame and death? Okay, what do you think motivated Jesus to endure the agony of betrayal and shame and death. To answer your question, I think uh, God was thinking of his children. You know, parents, we tend to have, you know, endured love for our children. Yes, yeah. Unconditional. Of course, the need to deliver us because God feels that we are important. That's the major, main motivation. It was difficult. It was a difficult task. Um, but because he came to fulfill that prophecy, um, that motivated his actions. Um, and we can see that prior to his coming, prophets had predicted um, that he would come. He's going to be the king of the Jews. Um, he would be killed. He will be falsely accused. And he's going to come from the lineage of David. So these were all prophecies. So in order to fulfill the prophecy, which he knew, he prepared himself to do. If you look at how he was tempted 
by the tempter, by Satan. He did not uh, oblige uh, to Satan's request because he knew that he had more power. He knew his mission, um, the, the mission he's here to fulfill, and he was focused on fulfilling it. So thank you for your response. Any other contribution from group two? Any thoughts or from, from the class? So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to me, it sounds like Christ living on forever for the rest of um, the days that we live as well is um, God's protection for us through spirit and through like um, our energy, our um, what we hold on to to survive every day. Right. It's Jesus Christ's love and his um, just the thought of Jesus being our guardian angel is right. enough for us to to live on with peace and in God's love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that takes us, thank you for sharing. And that will take us to the subject of faith because we believe that that is a thing, that's our core belief system. And that belief um, is because we have faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, but evidence of things not seen. Because we believe that Christ is our Savior. And we believe that we can do all things, all good things, through Christ who gives us strength. And then we believe that as children of God, we have power, we have love, we're expected to have sound mind, and we shouldn't be afraid. So, and this belief is based on the fact that we know that we have a Savior that died for us. We know that we have a Savior that... Um, sacrifice for us. Hence, we have to uh, forge ahead, read the Bible, uh, be confident of who we are as children of God, and worship God with our heart and might, and uh, be sincere and love God as well as um, our fellow human beings. So you made a very good point. Any other points from group two? Any thoughts? Very good. So we'll go to group three. I see that we have some brethren. Do you mind joining group three? Do you have your first? Okay. So group three, please go ahead and read your verse. Thank you. Do you mind uh, starting afresh so we can hear you, okay, if you don't awesome. mind? Thank you. But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrect resurrection of the dead. Right. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made a die. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterwards the day that our Christ has his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered us the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all the rule and all art, art, artity, artity and power. Amen. Thank you for the reading. Yes, for he must reign till he had put all his enemies under his uh, footstool, under his feet. Yes, and uh, Christ, now see, Christ was born more than 2,000 years ago. He continues to reign. He doesn't have an ending. This is, he would continue to reign forever. And until he puts his enemy, um, his, uh, you know, under his feet, until the enemy is uh, destroyed. Even after the destruction of the enemy, Christ continues to reign. 
we can't hear of any other prophet that is reigning as that continues to um, to have impact all over the world. So um, Jesus, sometimes even when we are, if not all the time, when we are confronted with challenges, you call on the blood of Jesus. You call on the name of Jesus. It has a lot of power. So he continues to reign. So we Christians would have to understand that, that we have a Lord and Master who reigned forever, who had uh, set the blaze for us. He, has, um, he had uh, lived his life in a way that, like a role model, that we have to model our lives after. The life of humility, the life of, um, of uh, service to God, to his Master. The life of uh, having a sound mind that you, like when the tempter went to tempt him, he, he did not give in. He had, he had a sound mind. He had to know how to respond to him appropriately. And sound mind comes from understanding our position, where we are standing. Where are we standing as Christians? Where are we standing as children of God? Are we standing on our faith? that we believe in our God, that we continue to worship him wholeheartedly, that we love God with um, all our heart and minds, and we love our neighbors, we love our fellow human beings, and we have faith in our God, irrespective of the challenges um, that uh, we'll be facing. Um, so it's, uh, it's crucial for us to understand that. So group three, could you respond to your group question? And the question is, what does it mean to you to know that Jesus was raised from death and is alive today? What does it mean? I think our brother has something to say. Please go ahead. Do you need a microphone? Pass it on to him. Absolutely. You made a great point. Amen. Yes, 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 that we have life in Christ. And we shouldn't be scared. We shouldn't be afraid um, that Christ lived and died. So we can have life. That's what our brother shared. And that's awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. Who else has something to share regarding question three? Okay, brother Caleb, go ahead. Victory, you know, victory over the enemy. Um, okay. Because when Christ resurrected from the dead, it gave us victory. And through his name and through him, uh, it gave us power. To, um, just like Pastor always preaches, to do great exploits. You know, when Jesus said, uh, Jesus said that we would be able to do greater things than he did on earth through his name. So I think it just means victory. Um, and... Uh, Thank you. Amen. Victory. Uh, Dear Caleb said it's victory. Um, it gave us victory. Um, having the understanding that Christ died for our sins and became victorious. So that victory propels us to, have, to achieve exploits, achieve our goals, uh, pursue uh, righteousness, uh, believe in God, have faith. Um, pursue the goals that would please God and be able to uh, worship our God. So I thank you. Any other thoughts before we round up? Anyone has anything else to share? Okay, our dear sister, please go ahead. Do you mind using the mic so we can hear you? Okay. Thank you. Uh, for our group, uh, I read this down on the, my page. It says, uh, Psalm 10, verse 1, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at thy right hand, and I will make thy enemies thy, thy foes.
Rufus too. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Take your time until you get there. Yes, that he's going to, um, while you're looking, uh, we're waiting, um, that he would uh, make his enemies his footstool. That shows uh, our God um, recognizing Christ, uh, what Christ had done, uh, the role Christ had played, and the support. Remember, um, Christ would always tell us that he and his father are one. That the mission, he never contradicted a God. Whatever God said, Christ agreed. Um, so God recognized uh, what Christ had done and said he's going to, um, until he makes his enemies his footstool. Um, so Christ continues to reign by God's grace and will reign forever. Um, did you find our verse, yeah. sister? Please go ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, well said. Which is, we shouldn't be weary. Um, look at, if you're looking at uh, everything that is going on today, we have uh, COVID-19. Now we have the Delta variant. We have all sorts of news of flooding, of fires, um, of destructions. It's just too much. But the Bible is instructing us, based on what our sister has said, that we shouldn't uh, be scared. Uh, we should stand firm, uh, believing in our God. However, we should have sound mind and apply discretion wherever necessary. But we believe that we're children of God. We should continue uh, to be faithful. So we're going to round up um, quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talked about all these things happening when the end times draw near. He right. called it the birthing pains. Um, he said, "When you see these things, look up, for the kingdom draws nigh." And it's exactly what she said: persevere. You know, we should all be, we should all be keeping strong and staying hopeful because our blessed hope is in what comes to, uh, after this life. So, Amen. Um, is in Jesus. Yeah. Yes, okay. and that uh, we should run to the mountain. Now we should run to the mountain, which is uh, believe in God. Um, go to the house of God. Do what needs to be done. When you hear all these trials and t tribulations, um, rely on our God, and we have to do what we need to do. Um, yes, so we would uh, round up today by referring to Ecclesiastes 12.13. So according to Ecclesiastes 12, 13, it says that this is a conclusion of the whole matter, that we should fear God and keep his commandments. So wherever we find ourselves, whatever we're doing, fear God, keep his commandments, monitor your thoughts. We all, including myself, we should monitor our thoughts because our behavior comes from our thoughts. Um, you want to check those negative thoughts or those thoughts that can put us in trouble to hate our fellow human beings or to do things we're not supposed to do. So when those thoughts come, we want to fight them. We want to pray. We want to, uh, you know, um, so that we will, to the best of our ability, uh, continue to love God and love his people and love uh, everyone else. Um, so we'll fear God and keep his commandment. Thank you so much for coming to class today, and we would uh, see you again on Sunday. God bless you.